Good evening, dear compatriots. The Joint Information Center continues its activities from the city of Goris. At this moment, let's talk about the situation on the front line and then I'll answer your question. So today, starting on the morning, the Azuri Armed Forces started their offensives both in the south and in the north. In the southern part with more forces the offensive was launched the armenian armed forces they fired back and destroyed a lot of armory and soldiers and pushing back the adversary to the initial line so this kind of small efforts have been done in other directions but at the moment so severe battles are taking place in the southern part in particular today and during the whole last night and i personally witnessed that so the azerbaijan armed forces they missiled and shelled different settlements of arts in particular Stepanakir, Shushi and others. You know, as a result of today's bombardment, we have, there are casualties among your colleagues, reporters. Today, twice, which proves one more time that was done intentionally, so the Azerbaijani armed forces, they hit by missiles, the, uh, the cathedral of Ghazanchetsot in the city of Shushi. And as a result of that, uh, substantial damages have been caused to that uh, cathedral. There were civilians there, and we are now. Uh, I think the uh, Artsakh's Ombudsman's office will speak about that the results of casualties and damages. And if we summarize the results of Azerbaijani aggression and their strikes uh, onto the civilians, only in Artsakh, we have the following picture. In general, we have 93 casualties and only 20 of them are of light and medium level <laughs> casualties. We have 20 killed, uh, not counting one person was killed in the territory of the Republic of Armenia. 4,600 buildings have been damaged, more than 4,000 uh, vehicles and other type of assets were damaged. So 750 different infrastructures and other public and commercial objects were damaged. And this is without the results of last night and this morning offenses. This is the general situation. As, as I said at the moment, there are really severe battles and the, the, at the moment I can't speak about any tactical successes or defeats uh, both during the last night and uh, during today so the results they have to be summarized so this much now I can take the questions from the floor so center the TV channel watching Gregorian Mr. Hovanisian this morning the Prime Minister of Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan, made a statement and uh, a, a few hours ago the National Security Agency also made an, uh, another statement that there are people that, that are um, making statements that Nikol Pashinyan is a traitor and uh, they convinced even our soldiers to give up certain positions and those uh, those traitors were doing this kind of propaganda. So, well, uh, I don't know, frankly speaking, if there was such a statement, that means the National Security Service, uh, counterintelligence and others that are responsible for the sector, they have uh, some facts or factors, and it's very important that this kind of uh, things were found out. Mm. Nevertheless, I would like to find out whether, do you have any information whether this kind of propaganda is carried out, this kind of incidents happened in different parts of the front line? Because the Prime Minister said that according to his information,
Similar cases have taken place in other parts of the front line. I can exclude anything I don't know, so this is the prerogative of the special services. So, so, even in the most delicate situation, it's possible to find out this kind of traitors. So, Artur Matveev, so unfortunately, um, the translation wasn't clear, so I'll ask in Russian. So, those who follow these events uh, from Russia, the events that took, have taken place in Shushi, and what happened, our reporters uh, were uh, shot. And uh, what is possible to do to avoid this kind of situation in the future? So, my information is the following that one of the reporters is in a really critical condition. So, how it happened, it's hard to predict or explain because if if the country shoots at uh, certain uh, objects and knowing, uh, for example, that this is a church and there are people. So it's needless to use other explanations. The, the rest is an absurd. Yes, incident also happened before that in the city of Martuni when the French reporter was uh, wounded. They know very well that there are a big group of international reporters are working in arts and they aim at them. They don't care about the opinion of the international community. They just trying to shoot, to destroy the reporters. Uh, the reporters are reporters are targets. So you see yourself, it's happening in front of your eyes. Stepanak and Shushi, they are not kind of big cities. And it's well known what is where. So I would like to I would like you to tell the whole world what's happening here. In order to avoid in the future this kind of incidents, I don't know what needs to be done. If Maybe, maybe you don't go there, but I understand that you and your colleagues, they would like to go to the front line. It's a normal, it's, it's a human behavior. But uh, the same thing is not happening on their side, because we are not shooting at them, at civilians, at others, and they don't have uh, reporters. It's like closed on the other side. So, uh, otherwise the whole world would know who's right, who's wrong. So, what's, what's, would you please give some additional information about these uh, casualties, the, the reporters? Right now I don't have any information. In an hour I'll clarify, find out, and then I'll electronically let you know. So, um, I have the same kind of question, so, so uh, is there an asymmetric strike like the one that was hit by Shushi? So, if you mean symmetric hitting, um, uh, striking on some cultural objects, no, we haven't done and will we not do that? So, during the last war, they send 1,000 shells to Stepanakert, and this church was the warehouse of those shells. So, from in the in the backyard of this uh, cathedral, there was a, a missiles launching system Grat, and they were shooting from there. We. Uh, live here for centuries, we know very well their nature, their handwriting, their way of thinking. It's important to tell the whole world, so to make the whole world know, to know about that. Mr. Vanisian said that our armed forces, are con they continue destroying the ammunition of the adversary, and, oh, but, uh, and they keep using this uh, shelling and, uh, and uh, there, there, there's a 
notion that put in circulation about 40 percent of their ammunition has been destroyed so i will not say you some exact figures because this is something is part of their military planning and but uh, but of course it's not this kind of uh, things are not endless even if you have parallel supplying you can't really uh, recover recover all those losses of ammunition because the f during first five days their losses are huge and and now we see that the intensity is different and instead of that they use far-range artillery and, and so they have more in terms of artillery rather than the armory but the fact that they are trying to replenish their stocks and continue this kind of genocidal actions it's obvious how long will it last it's it's very hard to forecast mr Ovarisan, could you please tell us which part belongs to Azerbaijan among these ammunition and arms and, and the, the so the biggest part is a Russian made Soviet time made uh, this kind of weapons and uh, as we also do have the high technological weaponry belongs to Israel and some Turkish share also also there is a Turkish share in their conventional in the stocks of their conventional weaponry so they have different types of shells uh, just uh, uh, Turkish manufactured guns and this is the main breakdown of their uh, ammunition and weaponry if there are no questions, Mr. Vanessan, I would like to read the questions that we received from our colleagues uh, from Gala TV, our friends as uh, At the moment, how many injured civilians and soldiers do we have and what's their condition right now? I can't say you a final figure. I think that uh, so our medical services will uh, speak about those figures. I can say a good thing, good news that due to the high professional level of our doctors or medical service, about 30% of casualties within 24 hours, in fact, receiving the adequate medical aid, they go back to their regiments. It's a very high percentage. Even, and we have to take into account the armed forces, both sides, they, they have very high density of artillery bombardment, thousands of shells during the day. Okay, one more question. So, the fact that aggressor hysterically bombarded the uh, uh, St. Hazan Chitsov's cathedral, is this something a uh, reflection of their des despair or it was a well-planned operation? I think both. Uh, yes, the despair and this kind of steps, I don't know which are the right words to use. These kind of steps were done on the background of their losses in the battlefield. On the other hand, we know that all our sacred holy places were target for them, regardless where they are <coughs> and what are the methods of targeting them. Uh, using hammers or explosives or shells and missiles. So the Prime Minister said that some people are trying to convince the soldiers to abandon their positions. What's the reason for this and how we are going to fight these kind of things? Dear friends, during the wars, unfortunately, in parallel with heroes, in our case of mass heroes, Treason also happens. Unfortunately, these are inevitable things during the wars. The most important is that the, the strategic 
management system keeps the situation under control, finds the proficiencies, corrects it, and move ahead. So our uh, strength is very high. Uh, my friends asked me that there, this was information on internet that Armenian soldier was imprisoned by the aggressor. So, uh, I don't have clear information, but I said that there is intensive battles when there are a lot of uh, ba moves back and forth. It's a very intensive battle. Battles are taking place. So the likelihood of imprisonment is very high. You can't really preclude that or exclude that. Do you have any information what were the missiles that were used to strike the cathedral uh, in Shushi? Is it possible that F-16 fighters strike uh, the cathedral? Right now I don't have information about these uh, strikes, it uh, requires uh, investigation, but mainly Shushi, Stepanaker, Dadrut and Martini, they are hit by different missiles. Mainly there are four types of missiles, more one or two of them. These are Smerch type systems, Kasirga system, Polonez system, LA-160 uh, and I, in case of Shushi, I assume uh, it was not used. This is the expensive thing. Israel, uh, Israeli ballistic missile LoRa. These are they are kind of quite. They have quite long range, and this kind of uh, properties used for hitting uh, cities. Today, our foreign colleagues got hit uh, next to Gazanchetsov's Cathedral. The, what the, what's the information? Are there Armenian reporters, foreigners? So I said that in order not to repeat, in one hour we'll give clear information about their situation. Thank you. At the moment, these were all the questions. Maybe some questions are being repeated. That's why I don't want to read them. I want to repeat, dear friends, at this moment, active military operations are going on and in the morning it's possible that we'll give additional information about military operations that are happening now and during the night. Um, as yesterday I traveled to Artsakh and I was there during the night, I witnessed how these strikes are taking place uh, upon Stepanakert and Shushi, etc. One more question. So, so the identification, have you done identification of the corpse of killed as a soldiers? And can you identify the Syrian jihadists among them? Identification is very complicated. Taking into account during this kind of active uh, military operations, when the density of the artillery strikes is very high, it's very hard to do that. Often, uh, the corps are not intact, even. but the relevant specialists, they will do the identification and then we will provide you a summary information on this. Uh, there was a video just recently that Azari's site has captured Jibrail. So this video is like three or four days old and today it looks like funny really. And the last question that came from our colleagues from Reuters. Do you have information how many volunteers you have in the Armenian Army up to now? Tens of thousands. I can't tell you the exact figure. Tons, tens of thousands. Thank you, Mr. Vanisian. Uh, we exhausted the questions. Thank you. Follow us in Yerevan, in Stepanakert, in Shushi. Sorry, I shouldn't say Shushi, Goris. We'll work together and thank you. I want to thank you, my special thanks to you, that you knowing very well from the first day that you endanger your life, but still you go to Stepanakir Shushi in other cities, and the front line, and you do the coverage and you show the world the reality, the truth. This much.